building some objective markers. So I really kind of wanted to do this project. Uh, I really don't have any designated objective markers for Blood and Plunder. Uh, now, of course, these are pretty generic. You could use these for really any tabletop game that you want to use them for. Uh, I was wanting something a little more, well, a little more interesting, let's say. Uh, I usually use, uh, I got this, you know, this wheel from the... Uh, a pirate wheel from the pet store uh which don't get me wrong it's really cool uh but it's not really uh i want to have a, like a terrain piece so essentially i want to make my objective marker into a terrain piece uh so i came up with three different ideas for them uh and uh, i guess the best thing is just to show you and uh, tell you what i mean so this first piece i built uh is munitions so you want to capture cannon pieces weapons we got some swords in there now, okay, this may not be 100% historically correct. They may not have transported things in crates at, in this time frame. Um, but uh, I really like the way it looks. And sometimes I, I sacrifice history for uh, just some, uh, you know, something really interesting for the table. And of course, with the crates and stuff like that, it would be very viable for Blood and Steel, Blood and Valor, any bolt action, World War II kind of games, anything like that. Uh, they would have definitely transported things in crates. Um, but so anyways, I'm just kind of taking that back and uh, yeah, well, stretching the history a little bit. Uh, and uh, this is what we come up with. So I really like this one. So that's the first one we're building. That's the first objective marker. And the second one, I kind of wanted to build something like uh, building materials or ship parts or something like that. Uh, so this is kind of the next one. Now you can see I've got an anchor and some bits in here. I don't know if if you're not familiar with Blood and Plunder, uh, they have, uh, uh, Firelock Games sells a ship accessory kit. So it comes with four pieces, two anchors. Hmm. Well, you're going to do this with two anchors, but the second anchor, I can put it on this lovely terrain piece here. Uh, and then they got a little steering mechanism for the back of the boat, and it comes with a lantern, which I love that lantern that comes in there. Uh, but so this is a good use for those extra pieces. Uh, use them on a, a objective marker for uh, ship parts. So that's the second piece. So you got some lumber, you got some, you know, wood for building crate. Eh, it could be something in the crate. Uh, but anyways, that's the second one. And then the third one, uh, rations. Of course, you want to capture food and have rations for your long voyage. Um, for anything really um so i think this one would be the most generic i'm particularly proud of the fruit that i did in these little bins here i got some potatoes in this one what that is is actually styrofoam the white nasty stuff that gets into everything when you when you open up your packages so it's flat on the bottom if you rip it off from the edges and corners uh it's flat on the bottom which is great for gluing it to the bottom of this but on the top it has all these little round pieces right because essentially it's just little bubbles uh, and, uh, it worked out perfect for fruit. I, I never, never, I never thought of it in the past. I don't know why I didn't think of it till just now, but, um, a fantastic idea for that. It worked out great. Uh, now that my wheels are turning, I got uh, some other things that I potentially could do with that. Uh, but anyways, so that's, uh, something we're going to show in this episode, how I did that. Uh, and that's our next piece. So we got our, our food here, our rations. So those are our three pieces. Uh, just before we get down to the table, I just want to remind everybody, uh, next week there is no episode of The Plunder Den. Uh, remember, I've gone to a three-week on and one-week off rotation. Uh, and it's getting around Christmas, uh, but of course I will make an episode uh, when my Raise the Black arrives. So uh, that has been delivered. It's been sent out. I even got a tracking number saying that it's coming to my house. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, as soon as that arrives, uh, I will definitely be doing an episode dedicated to Raise the Black. Uh, I'm particularly going to focus on the starter box. So uh, I know there's some people that watch this channel not necessarily for blood and plunder but for terrain building um, but are interested in tabletop gaming and i really wanted to you know share this awesome starter box with you guys because it's a tabletop game skirmish game but everything that you need to play the game is actually in one box so you only have to buy this one box and you get you got two players worth of stuff so you got two ships two crews you got a double-sided map, you get cards, dice, everything you need to play Blood and Plunder in a single box. Now, the only thing I really know about games kind of like that are, you know, board games. And, you know, there's Heroes Quest out there, Battlemaster, old games from uh, Games Workshop. Um, but uh, this is the only one I can think of that just 
the whole tabletop game comes in, in one single box. So it's going to be really cool, and I really want to show you guys that. So this is an easy way to get into Blood and Plunder. You just have to buy this one box. You already got two factions. You got, uh, you're ready to go. You can uh, play the game already. All right, so that's uh, if that comes in, I uh, will we'll definitely do a separate episode for that. Uh, but other than that, uh, my next episode should be on December 27th. Uh, and there'll probably be a reflection episode, a year ending uh, as, as the year closes, uh, 2022, uh, kind of where I reflect back on the uh, year that was. And then, of course, in January, we'll get right back to that uh, building that pirate port, and we'll just keep building terrain for that. I want to get that tavern built, right? That's something that's coming in there. All right, so that's pretty much it. If you like what we're doing here in the Planet Inn, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet Inn and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table, let's start painting, and let's start crafting. Okay, so let's go over some of the materials I used for this project. Uh, I got some popsicle sticks here. Uh, we got uh, assorted uh, balsa wood. Uh, some insulation foam, um, some of that uh, rope. Uh, this is uh, still some of that willow fence I have left over. Um, these are I got from the dollar store. Uh, they're just like wooden square shapes. You get them in the hobby section in the dollar store. Uh, the freaky fabric that I've been used for fishnets. Uh, we got our hobby uh, twine, some flat balsa wood, uh, and then these three pieces of foam that I've cut out for my three different uh, objective markers. Uh, and assorted leftover parts, I got some cannon pieces, anchors. Now you could use whatever game you're playing with, so there's always leftover parts on, on your sprues. Uh, but I, I plan on using these leftover cannon parts. So I'm planning on building a few of them, so I got my Gorilla Glue there. Of course, I'm going to sand it up, uh, these pieces a little bit so that you can't see some of the, you know, the lines, the casting lines, uh, and then glue them together. Uh, and I decided to paint these pieces first with the black craft paint, so there's uh, no chance of any warping on them at all. Uh, just paint them up first. I've been kind of starting to do that. Uh, it works either way, but I, I prefer to just have them painted already. So I started off by uh, making some crates. Now, if you watched the crate episode, you probably have already seen these these kind of techniques uh, What I'm using here. I'm just showing you I got some skinny balsa wood and those are those little square pieces from the dollar store. You make a box first and then you kind of frame it out with those uh, that balsa wood. That gives you that uh, crate look. I'm just showing you I'm going to make a few of the larger ones, a few small ones, and I just showed you that I finished painting those pieces of... Uh, dollar store foam board so those are after i framed them out and that's pretty much what they look like so then i took some of that willow fencing and decided i wanted to make some stacks of lumber uh, for the building materials slash ship part uh, objective marker uh, and uh, kind of made some popsicle sticks here and i was going to make these into wooden planks like they had uh, like a stack of lumber that they're going to use to they could build the, the deck of a ship or or even just build on a, on a, on a building or whatever so I decided to uh, kind of do that. And I wanted to put them on a few, uh, like, logs so they weren't sitting right on the ground. Uh, and I'm just going to stack up these popsicle sticks. Uh, I, I kind of made a base first, and then I, I kind of uh, tore them up a little bit and made them look a little more rustic when I put it on there. And then I was going to use that twine to uh, just kind of bind them. So then I wanted to make some open cases that the gun pieces or the cannon pieces here are going to sit in. Uh, that's all just skinny balsa wood, uh, and as well here, except for the really small ones on top, those are matchsticks. I got cut some to the to the left there, uh, and that's kind of how I made the tops for those cases. I kind of had the idea of having a few, uh, the merchant has these cases open so you can kind of see the different weapons inside them. I just thought it would be kind of cool to have some of them open like that. And really, I just had those two types of balsa wood. That's what I'm just showing you. Uh, all I did was, you know, cut them up, glue them with some white tacky glue there. Uh, and that's kind of how I made the boxes. So uh, I'm just showing you all the different ones I made. I decided to make uh, four different ones. So I made one that was actually closed. 
so there's no uh, no weapons in there. And then these, uh, I got one for a swivel gun, a cannon. I got one with uh, two little swords. I actually had those swords left over from uh, cavalry uh, uh, characters. But again, uh, if you're building yours for whatever game you're building, maybe it's uh, like uh, Blood and Valor or Bolt Action or something like that, and you want to have uh, World War Two or World War One guns in those cases and stuff like that. So I'm just showing you that stack of lumber is all completed. I got the rope tied around it. Uh, and then I decided to make just some few random chests uh, to add to the uh, overall piece. A couple of just random crates. So really those are just uh, four. So those are a square balsa wood. And I just cut them into a, a shape like that. And really it just gives the illusion that it's a case. And then I use those uh, dollar store uh, squares there to cap off the ends. And then framed it out again with balsa wood. And then to make a like a locking device, again, if you watch the crate video, you've probably seen this already. I just cut that. That's just jewelry that I got from Michael's left. It was on the clearance section. I just clip off chunks of it and use it for uh, like like a clasp. So then I wanted to make some baskets uh, before. This is for the rations uh, set up. So I just kind of wanted to make some like blast, uh, baskets here that, you know, fruit would be sitting in and that and sort. So that's just matchsticks and balsa wood. And I just put it together again with uh, white tacky glue. So then I'm just showing you the rope that I'm planning on. I want to make a hay bale, kind of like I did for the hay bale uh, display I did on that uh, previous episode. And then I came up with this idea. I, I wanted to figure out how I was going to make the fruit. So that white nasty foam that you don't know what to do with, it makes great fruit. If you tear it apart, it's flat on the bottom, glue it in there, and you got uh, round shapes on it. Perfect for uh, uh, making some fruit. So this is after I've cut them out. Uh, and I kind of made that one half full because those flowers I showed you, I was just going to add some flowers in there. Just add, maybe there's a tropical fruit in there or something. But I figured those little, those are little bits left over from my ship sprues, uh, Farlock game ship sprues. And I just use them, maybe it's like cheese or something like that. So this is after you've already seen me make these hay bales before. Uh, that's in that dollar store challenge, uh, that episode I did for uh, the... Uh, it was uh, the thorn walls there and, and the uh, hay bales kind of thing. So I'm just showing you using some sandpaper. Uh, and I'm just kind of uh, making kind of like bags of salt and, and, and uh, coffee and that such. So this is similar to the sandbags I made for that little trench that I built. Uh, and I just sanded it into shape and then put a texture on it with that netting. Uh, and then use my little uh, dowel there to carve in edges. So uh, after I've got all the pieces assembled, I've kind of laid them on my four pieces here. Or my, sorry, my three pieces here. Uh, just kind of laid out what I want it to look like. So then I dumped a few stones. Uh, and I really just wanted to uh, add, you know, just some stones to the pieces. And, uh, put some interest to it. So it's not just like sitting on a flat piece. Uh, you know, I plan on putting some flocking and some other stuff on there to give it an interesting look. Uh, and then I'm just showing you I'm going to cover everything with the black crap paint, except for the hay bill. I didn't really actually cover that. Uh, I started gluing these on. Some of them are, I used white glue. Uh, some of the heavier pieces, like the metal pieces, and the, I didn't put on until later, but I actually ended up using Gorilla Glue for that. Uh, it's a little stronger, the super glue. So I'm just showing you that I've added the rocks and uh, I just kind of added, added some of the cases. So that's just a gunmetal by uh, Army Painter. I'm just adding that to the all the cannon pieces and anchor pieces uh, just to give it a metallic look. Uh, and then, of course, everything was else was painted with black and that's you know what I was kind of showing you there. So then I just pointing out the uh, freaky fabric that I added on for just I uh, put some netting on one of the cases. Uh, I usually put that on when I'm painting it black so it sticks to it. So I just paint the black paint right over top of it uh, and that helps it adhere to that piece. So this fabric right here, I mentioned it in the intro. So I just wanted to point that out that I put that on while I was painting the black paint. So I kind of uh, cra uh, put everything on there. Uh, of course, I didn't paint those two pieces. Uh, they're going to be glued on afterwards. Uh, I decided to add a, a barrel to it that I just got from the miniature market. Uh, and then you got, uh, yeah, just, I didn't glue that 
mainly just so I could get into there and help myself paint it. I didn't glue that lumber on right away. Uh, you can see those pieces are progressing. I'm just slowly painting them as I go along. I kind of did these in stages. So now I'm going to put my undertone. We got real brown, bark brown, peblo, and camel. These are all the colors I always use. Uh, um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't show as much on the painting part of this video. Uh, just kind of showing you the colors I used. I know I've had some comments that uh, the people would like me to do just more of just painting videos, and that's certainly something that I would like to do going forward. Um, maybe getting back to a, a video where I paint miniatures. Um, somebody wanted me to do some... Uh, uh, how I age wood. So there's some future episodes there where I can just focus on the painting portion of it opposed to uh, just kind of glossing over that. Uh, so th this is the uh, yellow ochre uh, real brown mix. Uh, I just kind of want to add some uh, yellow to the wood here on certain pieces. Then we've got desert yellow, uh, skeleton bone, uh, necrotic flesh, and mummy robe which will be all the colors that I'm going to use for uh, the stones that are on there. Um, you can see I already added the camel to them already, so they got kind of a stone look to them. Uh, but uh, we're going to add some more details. So it's just all about layers, right? Everything's been kind of touched with those four original colors, and then I'm going to hit up with all these other colors. So this is after I've added all the other colors I just showed. And as I was going along, I was painting those cannons as well. Just uh, figured out, uh, you know, add those colors uh, while I was using them to the cannons as well. So then we got Agrax Earth Shader, uh, Skeleton Horde, Hardened Leather, Dark Wood, a couple speed paints and contrast paints, and then Commando Green. And this is kind of my weathering package, <laughs> as you would call. Those are the colors I use for weathering and everything. So this is after I've uh, pretty well completed that. Uh, I've kind of added uh, those uh, contrast paints to the cannon bits, and they're all pretty well painted up. Uh, kind of hit everything I wanted to on the woodwork here. I haven't glued everything on yet because I kind of want to do these in stages. So now I'm going to move to painting that fruit on the uh, rations uh, objective marker. So I got uh, my dragon red, uh, pure red. We got uh, some jungle green there. Uh, goblin green, just kind of different shades of greens and reds and yellows there. Um, just to uh, emphasize, you know, like lemons, limes, and, you know, uh, apples or whatever. Just kind of uh, random colors there just to emphasize that it's it's just fruit in the baskets. The other ones I left brown because they made it look like, they look like potatoes. So I just figured I'd just leave it as potatoes. Um, and then I wanted to add uh, some of that, uh, those flowers in there. Those are just from Michael's, so just from the uh, jewelry section. I got some of these. I guess people put those in resin, and I, I just got a bunch of those. Uh, they were on clearance, and then I added that hay inside those. Uh, well, it's actually rope. It's not hay, but it looks like hay uh, into those uh, where the guns are sitting in. So it just looked like it was a packing material. So then showing you, I'm going to put some sand on everything. And then this is that uh, flocking that I've been using. It's just green moss from the dollar store. And I just kind of put it in a big tub. And I uh, used my scissors and, and pretty well cut it up really, really good. And then I just kind of break it up with my fingers. And it's just, uh, it just works out to be a really good uh, flocking material. I really like the color of it, actually. It goes good with the sand color. Uh, and then just a few tufts, uh, Army Painter tufts, I'm going to glue on there. So I just add that tacky glue on, uh, do the sand first, uh, then uh, then moving on to the flocking, and then the very last is the tufts. Uh, and then once that was all put on, I used that Gorilla Glue to glue all the heavier pieces down, um, the metal pieces uh, that are on there. That, that, that white glue, you can't glue that on, with, so you have to use uh, super glue. All right, so let's get down to the battlefield. They're all completed, so let's check out. Uh, that made a huge battlefield here. We got we got pirates kind of invading like a Dutch English port here. Uh, so we got uh, the pirates uh, attacking this Dutch ship right here on the docks and the new the pier that we built in our first pirate episode there, the pirate port. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of take a look through this uh, entire uh, battlefield. We got all sorts of things that we built in here. 
I just kind of wanted to show off. So a lot of the train that we built on this channel is on this board right now. We got our sea walls there. Uh, we got our crates that we built in a different episode. Uh, there is our first objective marker. Uh, it is the uh, building materials and ship parts. You're trying to capture that. Uh, if you're in the capture the field, that would be the first objective marker you're trying to capture. Uh, I kind of set up a little fort over there. We got a little palisade fort. Um, and then we got uh, coming over to uh, working our way over to the second objective marker, which is uh, kind of uh, by this uh, battlements that we built um, over here. Uh, we built on the channel here some more fortifications. Um, and uh, we're getting just over there to right now. There's the blacksmith's house that we built on this channel. And there we go. Right, uh, right there uh, is the uh, munitions. You get cannon pieces and swords and, and weapons. Um, so I really kind of want to sh show off a lot of the things we built on the channel. Just kind of encompass the entire year here in one battlefield. <laughs> There's a Tudor style house. There's the well we built. Um, over here, uh, well, we didn't build that in, but that's the that's the Boar's Head Inn that I want to replace over there. Uh, and of course, this is the uh, coffin maker, the carpenter that we built in uh, the last episode. And this will take us to our last objective marker, uh, the uh, supplies here. Uh, this is our rations, right? So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, checking it out. Uh, and uh, I look forward to the next episode. Uh, so it, hopefully it'll be Raise the Black and I'm doing an unboxing. <laughs> but the next episode should be on the 27th. All right, everyone? Thanks so much for watching. <music>